in a television studio shows Phil Hartman and Gilda Radner sitting in chairs. Hartman, hello, I'm Hill Hartman, and we're back with our tenth installment of what we are now renaming SNL's Crazy Critics, where one of our six critics will come out and critique the last SNL episode. Joining us this week is Gladys Randanowitz, a post-woke, post-feminist author of the serial non-fiction series Scissoring Venus Flytraps, as well as host of the podcast of the same name, which I understand is a post-sound podcast, meaning it is Gladys speaking sign language without a camera. Welcome, Gladys. Radner. I'm happy to be here, Hill, but I am disgusted with the decision to go back to the name Crazy Critics. Crazy is an aggressive slur against the mentally disabled, a group that happens to include women, and in particular women of color. So I think you need a new name to fit into my paradigm. Also, I wanted to mention I have started a new post-woke festival called Burning Men, where we burn alive all the men who attend. You should come. Hartman, I don't think I can make it, but I can't wait to hear all about it on your podcast. Anyway, what did you think of the cold open? Radner, great impressions, and it was very funny. But I agree with the robot Cletus that football is barbaric. It's not exactly a post-woke game. But it was great spoofing the lying, nefarious George Santos by Bo and Yang, Santos being a stand-in for men in general. They also mentioned the non-stop playing of the Verizon commercial with Paul Giamatti as Einstein, yet they didn't even mention their own girl, Cecily Strong. I have no problem critiquing this show for this program, but its lack of post-wokeness is a bit troublesome. Hartman, well, your devotion to women over men must have been satiated by the host this week, Aubrey Plaza. Radner, oh, believe me, it was very satiating. Ever since she came into my life as April Ludgate, Miss Plaza has exemplified why our post-woke society needs to be woman-dominated. Could you imagine her in a dominatrix suit? Anyway, I love that in the monologue she said that she was from Delaware, as that was a fantastic Wayne's World reference, and there was even a film cameo from President Joe Biden. Hartman, are you a Biden fan? Radner, am I a Biden fan? Why, of course. He's the most post-woke president there's ever been. He's practically so past being just woke that he's fast asleep. And that's how I like my men, asleep and not bothering us women. Hartman, what did you think of Amy Poehler's surprise cameo while Aubrey was giving a page to her? Radner, well, after my disappointment faded that it wasn't Tina Fey, I was very happy to see her. Certainly her being on Weekend Update and later portraying the genius that is Leslie Nope, she's a boon to the post-woke, post-feminist movement. More women should strive to have the intellectual strength of Leslie Nope. Hartman. Uh-huh. Anyway, what did you think of the first sketch after the monologue, the Miss Universe pageant? Jan Hooks, as Janelle Hunter comes out and says, I'll handle this question, Gladys. Now, for all those people out there who think that I take amphibians' rights too seriously, there was that slutty Miss Plaza, who I looked like a lollipop when she was a page, standing out there and shitting all over frogs. Frogs being a punchline. Frogs are people too, and they should not be forced to have to endure such ridicule from such a scintillating lollipop. As Hooks leaves, Hartman says, Thank you, Miss Hunter. Okay, Miss Randanowitz, what did you think of the video sketch, Black Lotus? Radner, first let me say that I was pissed that in the previous sketch, that they glorified women as objects and then not one, but three male judges, even if they were great cameos. It should have glorified women for their achievements and had some post-woke, post-feminist judges like myself judging the talent. And for Miss Plaza to make a don't take the vaccine joke was completely regressive and almost caused me to have a heart attack, like the one the Vax gave me last week. As for the video sketch... I thought it was very racist title and should have been called the African American Lotus. But it was very funny and I enjoyed it. However, Chloe doing a version of her Jennifer Coolidge impression asked for a psychic at one point, 
and the producer of your show, Mr. Joe King, is a psychic. So I think there was secretly an homage to this show, which was very nice to see. And Aubrey slapping the shit out of a man. Fun all around. Hartman, I don't think that was a Joe King reference by Chloe. But anyway, what did you think of the next sketch where the couples were playing the game Taboo? Radner, well, after I got over the regressiveness of all the couples being hetero and including men, I thought it was very funny. And I did enjoy how much Aubrey Plaza's character devoured her male counterpart by calling his dick both Tiny Tim and Garbage and threw a dog at him. Though I'm not sure if she meant a canine or another man. Hartman, what did you think of the next sketch in a Catholic high school? Radner, well, I love that Aubrey's character, a nun, shed the regressiveness of that trope by saying that she died for two minutes and questions everything since there was no heaven. And it was very funny, including questioning whether the Easter Bunny is Jesus' pet or his boyfriend. Hartman, I believe we answered that question on episode 187 of this program, where it was revealed that Santa Claus was in fact jealous of how much time the Tooth Fairy spent with the Easter Bunny, whom the Tooth Fairy claimed was just a friend. What did you think of the video sketch Megan 2.0? Radner, while I certainly prefer gay men to hetero men, this sketch got ultra-regressive towards gay men. It was hilarious when they said that Megan 2.0 was like bros, but for gays. But did I hear Aubrey right? Did she call them little homos? I didn't think you could say that in the pre-woke 90s, let alone the post-woke 2020s. So that was a lot to take. But at least she was anti-men. Hartman, what did you think of Sam Smith's performance? Radner, I just wish he was more flamboyant. He was too heteronormative in my mind. Hartman, really? He wore a fur coat and simulated giving birth to a woman. Radner, yeah, just not feminine enough for me, though. Hartman, what did you think of Weekend Updates? Radner, I thought it was amazing. Very funny jokes regarding George Santos. And Bowen did a wonderful job portraying him just as he did in the cold open. I filled the gold man sacks, hello, but I didn't like the regressive joke about finding Obama's Kenyan birth certificate among Biden's confidential files in his home. It's jokes like that that slows down the post-woke agenda from wiping men out completely. Hartman, what did you think of Aubrey and Amy portraying their Parks and Rec characters, April Ludgate and Leslie No? Radner, Nope, was dope. It was great seeing two strong women who stand by their ideals. April is great as a parts and rec worker, no matter how little work she actually does, because she's a woman. And as for Leslie, no. Philip Seymour Hoffman, as Joe King comes out and says, I got this one, sugar tits. Radner, how dare you? Hoffman, Amy and Leslie, nope, sent this program a secret message with her joke. She said there was a bus service in Alaska called the Rosa Barks. While we rather infamously have named the various forest preserves from which we produce our show, the Rosa Parks. So the Rosa Barks joke was a secret message to me. As Hoffman leaves, Hartman says, uh-huh, right. Anyway, Gladys, what did you think of the Avatar sketch? Radner, now I love this one as it was right in my wheelhouse. As the butch ladies from Arizona, Vicky and Christine, reminded me of two of my old girlfriends I used to have on the podcast. We would use sign language while discussing the scissoring of Venus flytraps while hiking the Grand Canyon. It was magical. Hartman. Okay, great. And after Sam Smith's second performance, what did you think of the Devato HIV commercial? Radner. What can I say? Well, I found it very funny, and I love the hot salad bit. There's nothing more regressive than a man being afraid to be gay. It's okay, Devon's character. Didn't you see the musical guest? Just let go and be gay, even if Aubrey Plaza calls you a little homo for doing so. Hoffman comes back out and says, And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that Mikey Day's character was named Tommy, 
the same name as my alter ego and co-producer, Tom Murphy. So that was a dig by SNL and a secret message to me. As Hoffman leaves, Hartman says, right. And finally, the last sketch of the evening, film noir. Radner. Oh, I loved it. A Roger Rabbit spoof with a woman marrying old men for money, and then the man trying to stop her ends up dying. Nothing beats that, other than, of course, a Sharon Stone cameo. If only she had uncrossed her legs. But it was still amazing to see her. And dead from the earth, we're not alive. It's Saturday Not Alive, starring John Belushi, Chris Farley, Phil Hartman, Jan Hooks, Norm MacDonald, Gilda Radner, Danitra Vets, and with many other special deceased contributors, musical guest, Chuck Deardorff. And your host, Don Pardo. Everybody, Don Pardo. Applause, applause, applause. Pardo. Thank you, thank you. I'm happy to be here, even though I'm here anyway. I was a radio and television announcer whose career spanned seven decades. And I was the announcer for Saturday Night Live from its debut in 1975 all the way until my 90th birthday in 2008. Applause, applause, applause. Pardo. And now I've been the voice of this program since its inception in November of 2021. And boy, I'm ready to hang it up. Therefore, I brought in some applicants who are going to audition for my role. First, Norm MacDonald. MacDonald comes out and says, It's Saturday Night Alive, you know. Starring John Belushi, Chris Farley, Phil Hartman, Jan Hooks, you know. Norm MacDonald. Hey, that's me, you know. Gilda Radner, Danitra Vance, and with many other special deceased contributors, you know. Musical guest, Pardo. Okay, thank you, Norm. The next applicant is Gilbert Godfrey. Gilbert? Godfrey comes out and says, It's Saturday Night Alive! Starring John Belushi! Chris Farley, Phil Hartman, Jan Hooks, Norm MacDonald, Gilda Radner, Donitra Vance, and with many other special deceased contributors, including Gilbert Gottfried, musical guest, Pardo. That's enough, Gilbert. Thank you. On second thought, folks, maybe I should stick around a little longer. We have a great show tonight. Chuck Deardorff is here. So get ready for the perception of Silver Hollow. We'll be right back. 